Hello guys, welcome back to the Seven Engineering YouTube channel. Please subscribe our channel for the Seven Engineering videos. Today our lecture is about the truss structure. That what is the truss? Why we use truss? And what are the different conditions used in the truss structures? And what are the methods to solve the problem of a truss structure? So a truss is basically a try a, a system of triangles. You see here the truss is a combination of different triangles joined together with the two supports here it may be more than two supports so to define the truss in exact manner so here is the definition a truss is a structure composed of cylinder members joined together at their end points so what does that mean a truss is a structure composed of cylinder members so cylinder members here means that these are the members of a truss you see here these all are the members and these are cylinder members because they are very thin in their cross section cylinder members so these all are the members of a truss these all are the members of a truss and composed of cylinder members joined together at their end points so it means that these cylinder members are joined together only at their end points and these are their end points and these in points are also called as the joints or nodes so these all are the joints this is also a joint this is also a joint so truss is a structure composed of this member cylinder members joined together at their in points and this make a truss structure and the truss structure is basically a lightweight structure and mostly used in mechanical and civil engineering structures for the long span. So now what are the different conditions for to define the for to define the truss structure? So the first condition of a truss is truss members are connected at their joints. It means if I consider there is a truss structure, so these are the truss members, these slender members are the truss members, so these are connected at their joints only. You can see here this is a joint and this is a joint. So this this member is connected at their joints only. Similarly, if I consider this in a truss, so this is a member, structural member, which is connected by this joint and this joint, which are their end points. So truss members are connected at their joints only. You see here this one is also connected this joint at this joint. And this member is also connected at this joint at this joint. So truss members are always connected only at their end points or at their joints. The second important point is the second point states that all loads are must to be applied at the joints only. So for example, this is in the truss. So the load should always be applied at their joints. For example, this is a P1 and this is another load which is P2 and this is another load which is acting here at P3. So the loads should always be acting at the joints of a truss structure. The load should not be acted at the member. For example, there is a member in the applied load here. So this is not the correct way of analyzing the truss structure. It should, load should always act at the joints. So this is the wrong one. Similarly, consider here truss. So the load should always be applied at the, this joint. It should not be applied on this member because truss member composed of thin members which are not going to take this load here but we assume that the load acts at the joint. The third important point is the third point states that there is no bending moment in shear forces in the truss structure. For example there is a truss so we, we don't have any bending moment or shear forces and the truss structure because the load is in the joint and we have only tension and compressive forces in the member but we don't have any bending moment of this member for example like this like this the bending moment like this so we don't have these all bending moments or the shear forces diagram for the truss structure but we have some shear force and bending moment for the sulfate of this uh, this slender members but we ignore in case of the truss structure so there is no bending moment in shear forces in case of the truss structure. The fourth important uh, point for the truss structure is 
the fourth point states that the trust members are only under tension and compression. So this is the trust member. I told you before that these are the trust members, right? So these are only acted under tension and compressive forces. They are not subjected to any bending or shear forces. So in, for example, due to this P1 load, the structure member may be under compression. So we call it C. Due to this P3 load, this member may be subjected to under tension. So we call it T. Maybe this member comp subjected to tension. This member may be subjected to compression. This member may be subjected to tension. So the members of a trust, the trust members are only subjected to tension and compression. Compression. There is no such bending form forces or shear force in the trust structure. This is a very important point. The trust structure have only the trust members are only under compression and under tension. The fifth important point is. The trusses act in a plane and are considered as two-dimensional structures. So, for example, the slave is a two-dimensional structure. So, the trusses also act in a plane and they are only considered as a two-dimensional structure member. They don't have any third-dimensional like z-axis. They only have x and y-axis. There's x coordinate and there's a y coordinate. So, they don't have any z-axis. So, that's why they are considered as that the truss act in a plane. The sixth point is the sixth point states that the joint of a truss structure are assumed to be pen connection and frictionless. So these joints, all these joints of a truss structure are assumed to be frictionless. There is no friction. There is no friction in, in this joint. So these are called frictionless and the joints are pen connection joint. It should be kept in mind that the joints of a truss should always be considered as having no friction or frictionless and pen connection joints. The seventh important point is the seventh important point is related to the solution of the truss structure. So it states that the use summation of f of x and summation of f of y at each joint to find the unknown forces. So what it does mean? It means that let's suppose I consider this in a truss structure and there's a load acting as p here. So at each joint, for example, I want to find the forces here at this joint, this joint 1. So at joint 1, what should I do? I have to take the summation of y forces equal to 0. And to find the unknown vertical force of this member and similarly summation of f of x is equal to zero to find the horizontal force and this compression in this member so using the criteria of summation of f of x and f of y at each joint or at each node we can find the unknown forces the basic main concept behind the solution of the truss structure is to use the summation of y forces summation of vertical forces and summation of horizontal forces should be equal to zero and then you can find your unknown forces and there are two main methods to solve the truss problems one is the method of section method of section the other one is the method of joint these both methods use method of joint these both methods are used to solve the problem related to structure structure and these both methods will be discussed in the next lecture Hope you guys understand that what is the stress stru structure and what are the important points should be considered in a trust structure while solving the trust related problems. Hope you guys understand and don't forget to subscribe my channel for daily civil engineering videos. Thank you for watching my video.